So the exercise is that the following series converge or diverge. They converge, find the sum. They diverge, explain why. For our first case, I take the series sum n going from 0 to infinity, minus 3 to the nth power. I could shoot this one down two different ways. The first is to recognize this as a geometric series with r equal to minus 3. The rule for geometric series, they'll diverge if the absolute value of r is bigger than or equal to 1. Here, our r is minus 3, so the absolute value, which is 3, bigger than or equal to 1, so this has to diverge. Another way, we can use the limit test for series. The limit of minus 3 to the n, as n goes to infinity, it's not going to exist. It's going to go oscillate and then go off to plus and minus infinity, going back and forth. So it's never going to settle anywhere. So the limit does not exist. That's fine. All we really care is that it, the limit does not go to zero. If the limit does not go to zero, then it has to diverge. So that's another way to see that. Okay, let's try. Summation as n goes from 1 to infinity, 2 to the n plus 3 to the n over 5 to the n. Now, there's no rule that tells us how to combine 2 to the n and 3 to the n. It's tempting to make that 5 to the n, but no dice. So what can we do? Well, we have rules for series. Okay, we'll assume this converges and see what happens. So if my series converges, then I'm allowed to split it up as a sum of two different series. So in this case, I would divide the the denominator into each term up top, split it up as a sum, and then apply the series operation to each piece of the sum. So all I need to do then is figure out the sum of each piece. Now these are geometric series, so all I need to do to check for convergence is to see what the R's are. In the first case, it's two-fifths. That R in absolute value is less than one, so it converges. And on this term, our r is 3 fifths. Absolute value of that r is also less than 1, so it converges also. So this business of splitting the series up, definitely a legal operation since both pieces are going to converge. So we could stop there and just say conversion. But we want the sum. So we need to be careful now. Why is that? Well, the limit on the bottom is not starting from 0 like we normally would. So I have to be careful. So it's always a good idea with geometric series to write the first few terms out so that you can identify the A and you can identify the R. So the idea here is going to be, although there's no obvious A from the way it's written down, because I haven't started zero, the first term that shows up is going to be our A. So think of it this way. If I write out the first few terms of this guy, it's going to be 2 fifths plus 2 fifths squared plus 2 fifths cubed plus 2 fifths to the fourth. And our geometric series formula requires that I have a times 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed and so on. So the very first term, I factor out that as a so that the rest of it starts with a 1. So here if I factor out a 2 fifths, then I get my 1 plus 2 fifths plus 2 fifths squared and so on. Same idea for the 3 fifths. I factor out a 3 fifths, and then I have a 1 plus r plus r squared, and so on. Now we can apply our formula. That just says take your r, 1 minus r, flip it over, 1 minus r, flip it over, and then we see that we're going to get, when you clean this up, 2 thirds plus 3 halves, and that's going to simplify to 13 sixths. So converges, and that's our sum. Let's take a look at, okay, the sum of the series as n goes from 0 to infinity of n over n plus 1. So we don't have a lot of series so far. We could guess that this is a telescoping series, but that's not going to happen because there's no way to get a minus sign into this. It's definitely not geometric. So the only other tool I really have is the, um, the limit test. So let's check that and see what happens. So if I take the sequence that's on the inside, I take its limit as n goes to infinity, n over n plus 1, I can divide top and bottom by n, it gives me 1 over 1 plus 1 over n, 
Now this limit goes to 1 because this goes to 0. And we notice this is not equal to 0. This was a convergent series. The limit of the sequence would have to go to 0. So we note this is going to be divergent by the limit test. OK, try another one. It's going to go from n equals 2 to infinity of n squared over natural log of n squared. First thing I can do, staring at this for a little bit, we have an exponent rule for natural log, so I can bring this exponent of 2 out in the front. That makes it a little bit simpler to look at, but we still need to do some work. So I go to my limit test. Let's take the limit of the sequence. We have n squared over natural log of n. That's going to be put, taking the limit of the top and the bottom, infinity over infinity. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule, just pretending that these are functions of x instead of n. So the derivative would be 2n. Derivative of natural log is 1 over n. So that gives me 2n over 1n. Multiply top and bottom by n to clean it up, and I get 2n squared. That's going to go off to infinity as n goes to infinity. So that's not going to go to 0. So again, this is going to diverge by the limit test. So the whole point of this one is just to throw in some L'Hopital's rule to reacquaint yourself with some of our old procedures. OK, then a final one. Let's try n going from 0 to infinity of e to the minus n. OK, what's confusing here is they threw in two letters. Don't be thrown by that. e is roughly 2.7. So this is really just a geometric series. If I pull out the n and leave the minus sign with the e, we're really looking at about 1 third raised to the nth power. So in that case, we're looking at a geometric series. The r absolute value is going to be less than 1. R, r here is roughly 1 third. So this is a convergent geometric series. To get its sum, all I need to do is, well, we notice if I write out the first few terms here, we're starting at n equals 0. So it's going to be a e to the 0 is 1 plus 1 over e plus 1 over e squared. So a here is going to be equal to 1. So we're just going to take r. 1 minus r, and then flip it over. So I'm going to get 1 over 1 minus 1 over e. And I can clean this up by multiplying top and bottom by e, which leaves me with e over e minus 1. 